What's going on, everybody? So, so far, this is our third draft of the night for those watching on YouTube. We went 2 1, 1 2, and let's see if we're going to 1 2, 2 1, or 3 0. Oh. And uh, probably going to be streaming tomorrow as well. Although it doesn't matter for you guys on YouTube, but for you on Twitch, I was saying that uh, Katie's going to lunch with some workmates or friends or something at like 12, 15, but it's in Denver, which is like an hour and 15 minutes away. So, you know, should have some free time. Anyway, vintage cube draft. Let's get it done. In it to win it. Hmm. Rampaging Ferocidon. I bet Koth comes back. You know what? It's twelve thirty. Maybe we want to. Maybe we want to be quick about it. Maybe we want to take Ferossi and draft that mono red life. Let's take Chain Lightning and see if Den of the Bugbear comes back. This is it. We're drafting the Mono Red deck. Mono red. Who is this guy? Well, I mean, like, so here's the thing. It's 1230. I'm a little tired. I don't feel like thinking about the best card in that pack. I just want to take the Rampaging Frosted on because it's good. And uh, the rest kind of just falls into place, you know, or at least we hope it does. I also had an idea for this green screen to make it go further to this side because I feel like it's still it's a little short on this side because the camera's angled this way towards the room. So like, it's hard, you wanna get it as close as you can to the wall, otherwise you have like these areas where it's not covered. Anyway, so I'm like, ooh, I kinda wanna try that. Dragon's Rage Channeler is interesting, but I'm really not sure of the likelihood. I don't know if I even like this card in the cube because like, I mean, it's great in modern where you could build your deck, but like it, it, I feel like in the vintage cube, like it's definitely not as easy to build a deck where like artifacts or enchantments are going to the graveyard to make this worthwhile. Yeah, we're definitely abrading here. Oh, I don't hate Avalanche Riders. That's a late coalition relic though. Have you been reading Once and Future? No, I have not. I don't even think I've heard of that to be honest. Boom Studios, huh? Yeah, I'm not... I don't think I've ever read anything from Boom Studios. Yeah, it seems pretty underwhelming. Um, Odysseus, I think he's referring to uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. Surveilling Unwanted Cards is fine, but is that worth a 1-1 one, one for, for 1? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But you also have to cast spells for it. I'm going to take Coalition Relic just in case this does not end up working out. Like, it might not. Could be red-white. Red-white aggro actually seems decent. And Ravages might come back as well. Darcy and Citadel. I don't even know what those are. <laughs> Darcy... Citadel. Look at the Corsair. Look, look at the Corsair. Now look at me.
I could just take Valky. Is Bring the Light in here? I don't actually know, but I'm going to take the Valky because I think it's the coolest card in here. It's a late Rafellos, too. This is weird. See, now we're at a point where, like, oh, none of these cards were any good. Didn't work for me. Check out We Stand on Guard, the Canadian manual. They give to children up here with a wink and nudge in the Southern District. <laughs> uh, oh, DRC. Oh, yeah, because you cast a spell and then you get to see the next spell and you get to decide whether you want to put it in the graveyard. That actually seems very good, yeah. All right, I'm taking, Guild I'm taking Gilded Lotus here, putting Coalition Relic back. <sighs> So my mana value. Taking Cauldra complete. Oh man, now we got a Blightsteel Colossus. This is fascinating. I also like Liliana. Let's take the Liliana. Eh, Fatal Push is good. Maybe we're just like, look, the Koth did come back. That's weird. And so did the Den of the Bugbear. Maybe we're just Jeskai. I don't think Bone Shredder, Yawgmoth, or Den are good. Maybe acidic. Yeah, we're just gonna take the let's take the bird. Okay, bye. Uh, dragons. Big makeshift mannequin. We don't know what's gonna happen. Finale. Interesting. Finale is cool because if we get a Grist, we can actually put it into play with a Finale. Plus, we've only taken Jun cards. Dude, there's so many indie comics right now that have been getting really... Maybe not entirely indie. A lot of them are Image. Eh, okay, Giver of Runes came back. Um, that have been getting such, such, such critical acclaim. Um, we have Gilded and Coalition. Relic. Maybe I'll just play Crassus. Agadim's Awakening is interesting. Ooh, Mox Emerald. And a Grim Monolith. But I think we're Mox Emerlding. Yeah, definitely Mox Emerald. That's pretty sweet. Like, the, some of the ones I read are Gideon. I, I read, I don't read, but I have in my list uh, Gideon Falls and... The other one. Oh, I like Duretti, but I also think Overgrown Tomb is probably pretty necessary for this this deck. Duretti might come back, and if it doesn't, like Vampiric Tutor, Stone Cold Serpent, there's a lot of options. I'm just gonna take the on color Shockland. Cells <sighs> Conscripts is pretty good. I mean, I would definitely splash a Stoneforge Mystic for this Cauldra Complete. That's weird. Okay. Can't think of the other book. Gideon Falls and something else. Uh, Natural Order is interesting. And that's pretty much it. It's I mean, I think we could still possibly be in a natural order deck if we get enough green guys. Yeah, I like Donnie Cates a lot. I think his stuff is really, really good. Yeah, we'll take natural order. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I haven't read his run on Thor yet, but it's it's I, I'm really anticipating and I'm looking forward to it, so no spoilers. Um, Assassin's Trophy is good. Bitter Blossom. Do we have any synergies with Bitter Blossom? It keeps Liliana alive. Recurring Nightmare might come back. I'm going to take the Bitter Blossom because I think it has more potential upside. 
Oh, Bitter Blossom and Vraska is also a great combo. That's pretty sweet. Um, you can sack the tokens. Toski. Also very good with Bitter Blossom. Let's take a Toski. Toski. Yeah, there was Sculpt Clamp, also Recurring Nightmare. So one of those might actually table. We'll see. Shatter Skull Smashing is probably fine. I think it's better than Una's Prowl or Mastermind's Acquisition. Now we have Agadim's Awakening and Shatter Skull Smashing. Oh, Sylvan Carry Added seems great. Marsh Flats is sweet because it does get overgrown tomb currently, but I think it's more important to have like O3 creature that can actually uh, tap for any color. Hydroid Crassus. Now we can we got Gilded Lotus, Coalition Relic, Sylvan Carry Added, and Bird of Paradise. That's pretty good. But you mean to ask how's the job going? Job is going great so far. I've been really really enjoying it, and. Uh, been pretty life changing, I'll be honest. It's been great. Oh wow, Nissa came back and Stone Coil Serpent? Jeez. It's gotta be Nissa, right? Yeah, I'm gonna take the Nissa. <laughs> oh, Thrag Tusk. That's pretty sweet. Incinerate's kind of kind of meh. I I'd rather have Thrag Tusk for like the sideboard or something. Sword of Fire and Ice also not bad with Bitter Blossom. And take Sword of Fire Nice. Oh, we could have Magus of the Order and Natural Order. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just take Mirari's Wake. I mean, right now our only red cards are Braden Zealous Conscripts, actually, so. And we have an Overgrown Tomb with no real incentive to play red. We could actually just play like blue for Hydroid Crassus or white for Mirari's Wake. Um, Resto. Interest. Oh, we have Valky. We do want red for Valky, but we don't actually have to play the red cards for that. Last pick. Yogmoth's Will. That's something. Um, okay, nothing super exciting in this pack. Yeah, Black Pack of Valky's red, but like we still have, again, we have Bird, Sylvan, Coalition, not Gilded Lotus for like the one red, so it's not like super necessary. I'm probably just taking the land here. Like, I'd still have more fixing. I think Elspeth's Son's Champion is the only other card that I would consider there. Okay, well, now we're in, now we're in blue. <laughs> With Hydroid Crassus and Oko. That's pretty much all I need to see. Yep, that'll do. And now we're Sultai. Also, Oko's another fantastic card with Vraska, which is why I really like this Vraska in cube because both Bitter Blossom and Oko go really well with it. You just like take a point from this, and then you get to sack the card, gain the life, and draw a card. Or you can make a food and then sack the food, draw draw a card, gain a life. Like it's pretty good. Um, Watery Grave seems good. I do like a Garrick, but I'm pretty much more interested in getting a land that lets us cast Oko and Hydroid Crassus. As if it were ever not Sultai. Truth. Um, this makes green elves, which actually means Natural Order can sacrifice the Oko tokens. Interesting. Like it makes me tempted to take Woodfall Primus, but I also kind of just want to take Stone Forge in order to put Cauldre Complete into play or Sword of Fire and Ice. I'm just going to actually take Stone Forge here. And now we can take either Temple Garden or Scrubland, which is pretty sweet. 
also resto blinking stoneforge uh blinking it's kind of it i guess um i'm gonna take the the white black because we do have liliana which might want more black sources than green sources like we don't actually have any double green until turn five Temple Garden being a forest, though, is nice for Nyssa. I personally love Loki. I think it was fantastic. Botanical Sanctum. It's a late ancient tomb. Flesh Norn is interesting. Uh, it might just be Botanical Sanctum. Like, the Marvel shows have just been really enjoyable. Like, they don't feel shallow. They feel really deep. They feel well thought out. Like, I feel like there's an emotional connection to the characters. Like, I'm wondering if Ancient Tomb is better here, but I feel like we're taking a lot of damage already between Bitter Blossom and I guess that's it. <laughs> I'm going to go with Sanctum here. I feel a little better about it, even though I don't... Oh, Noble Hierarch is a great pick up here. <sighs> Court of Bounty might not be bad, but we don't really have creatures that are like, putting them into play from our hand is really what we want to do. Noble Hierarch tapping for blue or green is great. It's the hold up here. Yeah, I also liked Black Widow too. I understand people's complaints, but like, I just, it's like, whatever. Okay, now that we have Noble Hierarch and Bird and Sylvan and Oko to make green things, I'm actually taking this Progenitus and putting Natural Order in the deck. Like, we also have Toski that we can sacrifice. Like, we actually do need more playables though. Hmm. Uh, Night of Autumn is actually really good. So is that Elspeth, though. Jeez. I don't think we have a Night of Autumn effect that's going to get rid of an artifact. Um, yeah, let's just take Night. I think our top end is good. Let's take Night of Autumn. It's a nice... Oh, Regrowth? Sure. Uh, do you want Hero's Downfall? Kind of. I think I think regrowth is actually gonna be better here. I do not think we're an Oath of Druids deck. I don't think we're a Heartbeat of Spring deck either. We could actually play Morari's Wake now. Oko does get rid of artifacts, yeah. I, I mean I oh Woodfall Premise is also decent for our natural order plan. Oh, I like Archon of Cruelty a lot. Jeez, that's pretty sweet. Um, And Biogenic Ooze. All right, cool. Biogenic Ooze actually might be better than Nissa here. We don't have a ton of forests. So we're splashing for like two blue cards and two white cards. This is 24 now. Man, now we're like, now we're card rich. So the only reason I like Lotus over Wake is because Lotus does fix if we need a blue, but you might be right, actually. I think that might be correct. Because we do have some 
decent fixing here. We also have Valky, but I mean, like, so the problem is like Mari's Wake doesn't produce red for Valky, right? So that leaves us Coalition Relic, Sylvan Carry added, Bird of Paradise. We no longer have Gilded Lotus. Like being able to go Lotus into, I might actually not like Nissa that much. Like, I don't know how many forests we're going to have, but. Oh man, you've been too busy getting a brand new house. How much work could that even be? Uh, the only reason not Lotus and Wake is just because we're at 24 cards right now, so I'm like looking for cuts. So, um, you know, I mean, if we can if we can fit both, I'd be fine with it. Like, but now we need two cuts rather than one. Also, Knight of what another great target for natural order. Pelucranos necessary? I don't think so, but we also don't have a Pelucranos in the deck, so. <laughs> I think you mean Progenitus, but, like, that's the whole fun of natural order, right? Is, like, getting Progenitus into play with natural order. Like, that's just, that's just Pelucranos necessarily? You don't mean Progenitus. You do mean Pelucranos. Next to Lotus, Vraska? Vorinclex? Not many imp I mean, like, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Like, Oko makes green creatures. We have Knight of Autumn. We could sack Toski. Nissa does make green elementals. No. I mean, like, six creatures seems fine. We could also play cheap Hydroid Crassus for, like, one on turn three just to get turn four. Like, I, I think seven creatures is more than enough before turn three, you know, like. Right, like we could also go Mox, Bird, turn two, Natural Order. We have Noble Hierarch and Birds for that, like. I mean, I think Liliana is really good. I could see sideboard push, but I don't, I don't think, I think Liliana is great. If, if you can get turn two Bitter Blossom, turn three Liliana, or turn one with a Mox, like. If they can't disrupt this, like you could just ultimate it really, really fast. And I think it's very good. Um, probably just cutting Nissa to be quite honest. I don't know. Like these both seem better. Maybe that's wrong. This with Bitter Blossom seems really good. Yeah, I'm gonna cut the Nissa. I, maybe it's wrong. I don't, it's fine. Like, it just doesn't feel like it's going to double that much mana, so. Uh, let's get Muta Vault out of here, because it sucks. Okay. So, sort by color. I also like Archon of Cruelty a lot. That card's been sweet, so. <clears throat> um, No. Do we have any anything red? Oh, just Progenitus? No, don't do that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, three, four, five, six, seven. Coalition Relic as well. One, two, two, three, four. Okay, that seems that seems as good as it's gonna get. So we'll see. Yeah, I agree. Nissa is great, but I feel like our top end is pretty covered. Like Toski, Natural Order, Vraska, 
Warren Collect calls her. Like, I mean, she's great. Don't get me wrong. I think she's great. But it's just so many little creatures that Liliana can kill. Hmm. Well, Progenitus Natural Order in hand. Yeah, this hand seems great. <laughs> uh, let's keep it. Double ship that. Done. What did you think of the extended trailer for Dune? I have not watched it yet. I have not seen the extended trailer. I want to be honest, like outside of Marvel movies, like trailers have not excited me much because I'm not like going to the movies. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like, oh, I can't wait for this to come out in the theaters. <laughs> Every game <laughs> never fails. So like I'm also, I'm actually not even like super in touch with like what movies are coming out and stuff. Oof. Okay. You got it, my dude. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, let's play this. Next turn we can play two things. Just play a way play an play a, a mountain's awaken cast progenitus. Yeah. It's definitely crossed my mind before. I'm like, I can just cast this. I can just cast this if I just have that that mountain. So we got one, two, three, four, five mana. We can go Bitter Blossom Sword. Just out of green. I'm just, I'm just gonna play Noble here. They're probably gonna play Brazen Bar. They're gonna play a Swamp, and then they're going to. Uh, Fallen Shinobias. You ready? Okay, that was nice. Do we have shuffle effects other than the Leon discard? Uh, shuffle effects. Not to my knowledge. I can't think of it. I mean, like, natural order. Okay, so they have Cryptic Command Mana, so that's pretty cool. Cauldra complete. So they didn't counter anything. Hmm. I don't know what they're gonna. They didn't do anything. So just four wasted mana. That's not great. If they didn't do anything last turn, and this turn they play needle spires. I feel like we're okay. Yeah, I'm just like I feel like that's insane. Yep, that was pretty good. Next time we get to put Cauldra Complete into play? Okay. Well, all we saw was literally Brazen Borrow in a Just Guy deck, so. But yeah, I mean, Liliana kills the one creature they played that game, so. I, I also can't wait to see Eternals. And I love all the memes about Eternals where people are like, oh, wow, you didn't show up for Thedos? And I'm like, it, you know, like, it's, you're not, like, the context clues here is that, like, okay, clearly whatever the threat is that they did appear for is greater than Thanos. Like, that's what they're trying to tell you. You know? Uh, snap keep. Turn. We can probably ship Valky here. See, this is a turn two Lily. That's pretty good. Lurliana. It's no longer a turn two Liliana. Okay. Turn three is still good when they got nothing on board, so. That's okay. I 
Uh, we're just going to play this because the next turn, Vorinclex into Liliana seems pretty good. And I'm sure they have Brazen Borrower, yep. <laughs> so they could literally just play Brazen Borrower. I guess they attack Liliana, she goes to one, so. Seems good. The protege may have me more excited than the Eternals. I don't actually know what the protege is. This thing. And then this thing. Next turn, we got a big old Vorin clicks. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Man, after Thanos took that L and N game, he slept on my couch for like a month. Wouldn't look for a job or anything. It's unfortunate. It's really hard when Titans are down on their luck, you know. Let me guess. You're gonna get a twin piece. Twin piece. Lutero core. Oof. So we get to kill Jace? Oof, that's a banger. An opal and bonono banger. Also, Liliana kills every creature on board and this guy, so, you know, I'm just saying. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. If we had one more land, we could actually Marari's Wake. Oh, we get to put two counters on this? That's exciting. Oh, they're dashing. Uh, Liliana kills that guy too, just to, just to be clear. <laughs> like curious what they're gonna hit. Discarded Jitte. And they exiled an island. Sure. Oof. Oh, and Liliana gets double the counter. Oh my god, it's all happening. This is gonna be a turn right here, bro. Oh wow. Um let's go black and green. Probably could have played Marari's Wake here. <laughs> I mean, do you counter this and then I get the natural order? That seems good, right? Yep. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Well, I guess they, guess, guess they would have countered this instead, right? So we would have had to pay two more. We still would have had four, but... I mean, we're still just natural ordering, right? One, two, three, four, Uh, progenitus, sure. Uh, I don't think we get to alter because, uh, she would only go to six, but we would put her up to eight that turn. So like, it's literally, it's one turn away from ultimate. So that's cool. Now we got a progenitus on board. So they have to like combo kill us right here, which I don't think they have the mana for. They can get her, get their loot on. Uh, 
11 plus 7. This is actually lethal. I mean, Marari's Wake puts it at uh, 18. So, like, they have to put... Four power, four t five toughness in front, which Wandering Fumeral does not do. Brazen Borrower can't block. My fingers are all purple from the cherries I ate. I wonder if I ate some Cheetos, if it would balance it out. We had some banging cherries when we went to Montana. It was just amazing. Okay, they discarded Flame Tongue Yearling. Let's cast that Ragavan. Put a charge counter on it. That's good. That's a guy, all right. Um, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. Blue white two three four five and snoko oh oko also enters the battlefield with eight counters <laughs> um yeah this is fine. 4-4 four, four Relic. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> I mean, they automatically go to three from this, and they need to put five in front of this. So if they activate this, make it a 1-4 and block here, uh, they can block here as well, then they like lose most of their stuff. Yep, that was pretty sweet. What up, Filk Money? Good seeing you. Cherry bangers. Yeah, those cherries were cherry bangers. Oh, thank you for reminding me that I want to go on Amazon and find a cherry pitter. Because we had a cherry pitter in, uh, in Montana. It was pretty amazing. They were like pitting seven cherries at a time. All of these cherry pitters on Amazon are like one ofs though. Oh, here's like a, a five, a six jobby. Amazon, show me your best cherry pitter. Like a bunch of the same exact cherry pitters by different companies. It's all the same exact thing. It's the same exact model, but like they're named by 20 different Chinese companies. <sighs> Maybe I just go to like Sir La Table and get a get a gourmet cherry pitter. Oh, I can, I'm checking out the eight best cherry pitters in 2021, a ranked list. Um, yep. Progenitus and natural order in hand again, along with another eight drop and a seven drop essentially. So let's ship it. This hand is good. Sylvan carry added into bitter blossom. Let's send Cauldra Complete back because we can always get it with a Stone Forge if we. Oh, good. You're you're gonna be like that. Give me that Mox Emerald on turn one, man. Oh God, turn one Pack Rat is really just beautiful. Oops. 
if they just kill themselves with their mana card? How do you, how does it, how does a multi cherry pitter work? How the hell does that work? How does it get the, how does it get the exact spot, the pit spot? Man, what a time to be alive. Well, I think we're dying to pack rat. I don't think we have a direct answer in our in our deck, unfortunately. Yep, if we block, then they pitch a pitch a rat, which they're gonna do anyway, so. Turn one pack rat. Magic is Garfield. Buddy, you ain't kidding. Yep, there's the progenitus. Every game we're going to draw that guy. All right. So, mono pack rats. Let's bring in Fatal Push. Fatal Pusheen. Uh, let's take out... All we saw was Fatal Push and or, uh, Mana Crypt and pack rats, so we don't really have a great amount to go on. <sighs> I got regrowth. This says, according to the manufacturer, for this, this is a best for large quantities cherry pitter. According to the manufacturer, pitting as many as 25 cherries per hour is possible. Fucking per hour? Uh, I'd hope so. That's like over two minutes a cherry. Do they mean a minute? Because, <laughs> like, what? Grave tea discarded for a rat token. That's good to know. Okay. I mean, this sets us up for a turn three Liliana. If they want to go turn two pack rat, we can go turn three Lily. Okay. Well, I guess we're going around three guys. Iona, huh? Well, that's special. They're going to name black. We're going to draw an Oko. That's how it's going to go. Green. Okay, we're going to draw something else. Okie dokie. Well, pressure's on, guys. Pressure's on. Solid strategies all yield until the next end step. Yep. Well, our plan was one turn off. And now we're dead on board. Sounds good. This was fun. This is a fun series of matches that I, uh, you know. I have nothing else to say about this match. What can you do? If you guys haven't done so, though, please consider following or subscribing. They're great ways to support the channel. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you can do the same. There's also a membership option on YouTube, which is a great way to support the channel if you guys don't go on Twitch a lot. So definitely consider those things. And I'll try to consider streaming more frequently. How's that sound? Fair? Okay. Sounds good. Glad we came to some sort of agreement. Both players participated. Perfectly stated. Yep. This hand's rough. If we're going to ship it. We can do better. Uh, this will keep... 
ship the Primus because if we have Natural Order, we can still get Primus. If we get Stoneforge, we can still get Sword of Fire and Ice and still put Cauldre Complete into play. So, plus this costs seven, the other one costs eight. It's just just academic, buddy. Just academic. I mean, I'd love to have a card I can play before turn four. We have a, a lot of them in our deck, including Birds of Paradise Igno and Noble Hierarch and Mox Emerald. Mox Emerald next turn would be good. So they can just counter our Vraska. Gilded Lotus instead. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we can go Gilded Lotus into Cauldre the next turn. So that's exciting. <laughs> Make sure you counter this. Never didn't have it. My kingdom for a Leovold. Now they have Cryptic Command Man up. Oh, now they have second player in a row to have a Mana Crypt. Sounds good. Just make sure you play Frost Titan here. Trinkovich. Ah, oh, Galenlander Archmage. Great for uh, Gilded Lotus. Sounds good. What? You let that resolve? You gotta counter something, right? Wow, I'm surprised they didn't counter Gilded Lotus. They're gonna counter Regrowth for Vraska instead? Fascinating. Unfortunately, Cauldra is a artifact. An artifact. So they're just gonna be able to counter it. And they win the flip. Rich get richer. Does Vorinclex give them infinite Glenelinger Archmages? No. Maybe? No, because it already has a counter on it. But if it didn't have a counter on it, it would come back, try to put a negative one counter on it, but then it would fail. I feel like Vorinclex is a non-bow with your opponent's persist creatures, right? Oh, good. A Mystic Confluence. Yeah, I'm sure that's not going to be the end. Match has been fucking rough, dude. Jesus. I think I've drawn Mox Emerald zero times. <laughs> Whereas my opponents always have their mana curves by turn three. Sure. No, because it doesn't double counters. It halves the counters that they get. That's why their Planeswalkers get like, they can't go up. Yes, it's a Nambo with all Persist Creatures. Your Persist Creatures get twice as many negative one, negative one counters. Their Persist Creatures get half as many negative one, negative one counters, which would round up to zero. Are they just tapped out? Oh my god, of course they get another land. Fuck it, Jesus. Yep, cool. Solid. Kind of frustrating. Like, I feel like, look at this. Like, we have literally <laughs> 12, 13 cards that we can play before turn four, and we literally don't draw anything that costs less than four mana like i don't know oko seems like it would be unbeatable like liliana would have been great against their stupid glenlander archmage when it was in play like maybe agadim's awakening should be a swamp actually yeah that, that, that's probably a change we should have had this entire time i'm gonna keep this just because we have noble and birds here so And if we hit a land next turn, we can go Hierarch Birds, and it's like, it's already like a million creatures, so. 
Uh, noble. Attack it for two. Plus, like, as a mostly blue deck, they might not have very many ways to interact with these creatures. That's weird. <laughs> Okie dokie. Why not just Valky them? Because, like, it... I don't know. It doesn't seem great. I don't know. I think internally, like, I always want to play Valky as Tybalt. And I never want to just play it as Valky. Because I, every time I played as Valky, I'm like, all right, cool. I looked at your hand. You may or may not have a creature. Big deal. But, like, I mean, our hand is already pretty stacked, though. But, like, 7 8, 6 7 8. Okay, we just win the game because Progenitus. That's a cool card. <laughs> Let's bring in Nissa to take out Regrowth. Bring in Awakening, take out Swamp. Maybe Finale should be in here, too. I mean, just being able to get Progenitus that way is another... Another cool dude. <laughs> so, basically, 7-drop. I mean, if we hit another land, we can Oko on turn 2, which might be good enough. Progenitus being an opening hand is pretty bad, though. Uh, let's keep this instead. I mean, bird into stone forge into natural order seems good. Oh, boy. I guess we didn't have a nece necessarily a reason to play this. Okay, next turn, natural order would be insane. Okay. Okay. I mean, even if even without land, we still get Stoneforge, and they might not have a great way to deal with Stoneforge. Because, again, primarily a blue deck. Wow, this is a good turn. Jeez. Yep, no land, huh? I mean, this is where they missed a confluence. Counter this, bounce, maybe, and then draw, draw a card or counter draw two. They're just picking their modes right now. Yep. Yep, counter draw. Uh, no. Sure. You got it. Yep, that might be the game. And they won the flip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we hit a land, we just get Progenitus. That is a land, all right. All right. I mean, I'm not sure what they can do about this guy, and it's also going to kill them before their Ancestor resolves. Are we just going to... Is this going to be a 2-1 based on Natural Order Progenitus, which you guys didn't believe in? Plus, if we hit a land, we get a Vraska, and that can kill Noble or Mana Crypt. Okay, that... That'll do, pig. That'll do. And was that 3-0? Wait, what? Oh, 150 because I didn't actually uh, 
take down the previous. So it was 50 from the last one, 100 from this one. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Wonderful, wonderful to see you all. Hopefully you guys had a good time. Please be sure to like and subscribe and follow and support on Twitch or support on YouTube. They're great ways to support the channel. So definitely do those things. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.